No, the name of the cel particular celestial being, the brand of it was a rouser, R-O-U-S-E-R, one who rouses. Some people got the mistaken impression I was saying arouse, a rouser, an arouser, somebody who, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I was not saying that. It wasn't an arouser, it's a rouser. You get that? It's a special breed of celestial messenger that pokes people and tries to wake them up. And uh, the world is not going to be woke up. That's why the events of the revelation take place. And that's why Nebuchadnezzar had to be judged. Ooh, I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm going to tell you about those judgments of Nebuchadnezzar as we proceed here. But first, hi everybody, this is Martin Zender. I got my uh, headphones on because I misplaced my cute little earbuds. So now I got these um studio cans on my ear so i apologize for that you can't see my my beautiful little ear but uh, you're going to be all right which reminds me somebody's going to hear that somebody's going to hear me talking about my beautiful little ear and say martin zender is so full of himself now this is an appropriate topic i wouldn't bring it up unless it was appropriate to our studies in daniel and to king nebuchadnezzar because it is because this has to do with pride I would not ordinarily read comments people are making on this show. Well, I take that back. Yes, I would. If there's going to be gain in it, if something is to be gained, if you're going to profit from it, I will read the comments. And um, someone named Amy Shaw, I don't know her, God bless her, she's probably listening to me right now, made comments on YouTube. And since she put it there, put it there publicly, I'm going to read it publicly. Um, and it is instructive because it goes back to the old christian thing of being proudful being full of pride and we know pride comes before a fall well that's a scriptural verse and we see it in king nebuchadnezzar now on friday there's a different kind of there's two different kinds of pride and i've told you this before but i'm telling you this bears repeating because christians trip over this over and over again they're so careful not to love themselves. They're so careful not to be confident. They're so careful to some of them in some sects of Christianity wear ankle length skirts, hair in buns, women wear no makeup. Uh, why don't you just go the way of the Amish? Because that's a way station. I'm sorry, but skirts down to the ankle and wool socks and um, but ugly shoes. This is a way station to Amish land. And before you know it, you're going to be wearing black stovepipe hat, black uh, dresses, and I'm not talking about leather miniskirts and the little bonnets on your head. And um, the farther you go down that road, I'm talking to men and women, the more you shut yourself off from God's revelation. This might be a sidetrack, but I have been constantly amazed that the Amish or certain religious orders, say the Baptists, they're so careful about everything. They're so careful about dressing humbly because they want to look humble. They want to whitewash the outside of the tomb. And so the irony is that the Amish don't know anything about God. They still think, get this, that God is mad at the world and he's going to eternally torment people. <laughs> Can you believe that? This is what wearing uh, black pants, shoes, hats, and beards with no mustaches, what is with the no mustache? But this is what it does for you. It brings you nowhere. Because I find that the more concerned you are with the outside is evidence that there's something wrong on the inside. And then there are people like me. All right, we're going to get into this now. Amy Shaw, I got nothing against you, Amy. Hello? But really, this is your comment on my video called, which one is this? Hang on, I'm going to find this for you here. This is on Secrets in Daniel Part 10 on YouTube. By the way, thank you everyone listening to this series, telling your friends about it, sending me words of encouragement, support um, to help me keep this show going. I appreciate it. I need it. And we're going strong. It's only going to pick up steam, especially as we get into the book of Revelation. But again, Daniel and Revelation go hand in hand. From Amy Shaw, three days ago, Dude Zender. That's a good way to start, Dude Zender. Words of advice. I'm open to it, Amy. I am. Anybody who wants to give me words of advice, I'll take it. 
I would have given King Nebuchadnezzar words of advice. There's something different. Well, let's let me something different about Nebuchadnezzar than Martin Zender. Our names sort of sound alike, Zender Nebuchadnezzar. I understand this. I'm thinking of starting my name with two Z's because I love Nebuchadnezzar so much. Martin Zender. I think this would be an epicness. Dude Zender, words of advice. You are becoming full of yourself. Really, how can you tell? Is it the sunglasses? Is it my spiffy jacket and my um, periwinkle shirt? Is it the way I maybe rock back and forth in front of this microphone like Stevie Wonder? Is that what it is? Oh, is it because I'm confident in my material? Is it because I'm funny? Is it because I don't know? Well, let's keep reading. Maybe the answer's in here. I found you because of your position on hell, as I have been educating myself. That's good. I've enjoyed some of your messages. Some? Come on, Amy, some? All my messages are great. How can you not enjoy all of them? That was a joke. I'm just playing into Amy's hands. Let's keep going here. I've enjoyed some of your messages. Stick to the Bible stuff and not to nutrition. Now, this comes out of left field. I think I mentioned in one show about um, that cholesterol wasn't really bad for you and that the Eskimos, the Inuits, sorry, um, eat whale blubber for breakfast, whale blubber for lunch, and I think they mix it up in, at dinner and they eat seal blubber. Uh, in any case, I'm not to go into that realm because what do I know? So I'm going to stick to the scriptures, even with the Bible stuff. Don't forget where your wisdom comes from. You wouldn't be the first that has fallen. Now, Amy, again, I appreciate your heartfelt desire in this, and I'm taking that at face value. You really do want to help me, and I appreciate that. Now, let me help you. I did a series. I want everybody to go here after you listen to this show. You need to refresh this series. In Zender Special 90 through 96, I did a series called The I Cycle. It has to do with using the personal pronoun I. It has to do with self-confidence. It has to do with loving yourself. And it also has to do with recognizing the new creation, that I have been crucified with Christ, and there's no longer any danger of me falling out of Christ. This is old Christian thinking. Forget where your wisdom comes from. I mean, I don't even understand that warning because I am in filled with the Spirit. Not totally. I have the Spirit of God living in me. Let's put it that way. And the Spirit of God testifies with my spirit, as it does with many of you, that you are children of God. So we're living, breathing expressions of Christ, as Paul would say, living letters, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and how can I forget where my wisdom comes from, where I died and living in me is Christ. It's not me and Christ anymore. That's the dichotomy of the Christian religion. How is your walk with Jesus going? Jesus is over here. I'm over here. I could blow it 10 different ways because I'm not in tune with him. I'm not discerning his will. And it's all of this Jesus is here, I'm here thing, where in fact, um, when you come to, this is the old creation. You're still comparing the old creation. It's pre-cross truth. And I get into this on the seven-part series, The Ice Cycle. But it plays in here, and it plays into Nebuchadnezzar because there's an element of bombacity, and there's an element of pride that has a particular thing attached to it that marks it as wrong. Now, and I'm going to get I'm going to tell you what that is here shortly. But there's also a self-confidence and there's also a self-love that is absolutely essential to human life. It's absolutely essential to being a whole person and being able to take care of others. Never forget the analogy I, I got one day. I was watching, I was taking a flight somewhere to somewhere. And, you know, every time um, the flight attendant gets up there and she shows you how, in case of a pressure drop, these marvelous little um, oxygen masks will fall down. And amazing thing tells you to put your mask on before assisting a child. How selfish can you get? Put your mask on first before assisting a child? That's selfish. But you have to understand that you must take care of yourself before you can take care of other people. And so this comes into self-love. Going to get more into that in a second here. But where does my wisdom come from, Amy? It comes from above. What have I that I did not obtain? 
There's nothing I have that I did not get from God. That's an assumption. That's so God 101 that I almost, it's hard for me to go back and remember a day when I possibly thought that my wisdom had some other source or that my life had some other source or that I was operating independently of the Spirit. And yes, everybody is subject to be deceived and subject to fall. But the strange thing is you are more apt to fall by divorcing yourself, by still thinking of yourself in accord with the old humanity instead of the new humanity. That is, my old creation has been crucified with Christ. Now, I have a defender here coming up, Maria Eugenia Soteldo. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. She says this, and again, this is public, so I'm not, this wasn't, it's not a private email, so I feel at liberty to disclose these things. Martin does an excellent job helping those who are chosen. I can hear in your message someone who loves injustice. Ooh, Amy comes back. You don't hear anything in my comment aside from whatever you projected onto it. That's silly. I found Martin's site from a friend's suggestion. I agree with most of it, as I said, so I guess I'm chosen as well. Yes, you are, Amy. I've been watching more videos and have picked up on some serious self-love going on. It's something we're all vulnerable to. Serious self-love. Folks, I will confess to you right now, right today, that I like myself. I do have serious self-love. And again, this is healthy. It's given to me by God. The ego is given to you by God. Um, Paul uses the pronoun I 200 times, over 200 times in the New Testament. Because, you see, when you listen to the I cycle, shows 90 through 96, you will discover that there's nothing wrong with using the pronoun I once you've come full circle and see yourself post-Calvary, post New creation, post, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It's a great truth. I can't get into it here in full. Now, here's the difference between a person like me who may be bombastic on the outside. I'm a showman, Amy. I'm the progeny of circus people. I am a rock and roller. I like music, so I'm expressive. I move around. I wear shades because I think I look good in shades, and I think sunglasses are cool. Plus, I'm incognito at the college. And so if this makes me love, if this makes me someone who has forgotten where his wisdom comes from, then you're judging by the outside and not on the inside. Because there are many people, and I referenced the Amish earlier, who look all humble, and all saintly on the outside, but inside they believe in things like human free will, and they believe that people are going to go to hell for eternity, and they believe all these heinous things about God. So really, inside, that's the true pride that, that says, I chose Christ. I don't have any of that. I recognize where all the good things I have in life come from. I just happen to be a little bombastic on the outside. I'm a showman. I'm Stevie Wonder here with the shades in front of a microphone. Whatever. I enjoy this. I'm expressive. I like it. I'm alive. I'm living. I like myself. Um, So that's not the crime. That's not the crime. You're judging, Amy, God love you, but you're judging from without. You're judging from the outside. Look at the heart. And that's the case with Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to close with this. I started this quote on Friday. This is from A. E. Nock in Concordance Studies in the Book of Daniel from page 113. It seems that Nebuchadnezzar had fallen into a self-complacent, self-satisfied, somnolent condition, inflated by his own greatness. And here, here it is. Am I inflated by my own greatness? No. Um, but here's somebody who is. Listen to this. Utterly oblivious to God's supremacy. That's the key utterly oblivious to God's supremacy. Nebuchadnezzar was blustery on the outside and he was unaware of God's supremacy. Completely unaware. That's why God sent him that rouser to poke him. And folks, that's the underlying truth that we need to make sure that is in place. If we are completely convinced of the sovereignty of God in our life and that every good thing we have comes from above, then you can sing and dance. You can wear sunglasses. You can rock and roll like Stevie Wonder, and it's just a happy facade. You have the truth. However, if you believe that you are the arbiter of your own salvation, that you chose Christ, you can act as humble as you want on the outside. You can wear black. You can wear little lace 
doilies on your head, and that is pride. So do not judge by the outside. Israel judged by the outside. Soulish people judge by the outside. Judge from within. Judge from the place you give God in your life. Do you give him total supremacy, or do you believe you're in charge of your own salvation?